organized, so I have to go directly to um, Bharat Jayaraman's talk on subset logic programming. Hello? Yes, uh, I'm here and uh, let me just please, share my screen. Please share your screen, yeah. So you uh, have Mark, 10 you have minutes. Stop sharing. Unfortunately, you have only 10 minutes. So uh, I want to inform yes, you uh, a little bit after, a little bit before. Yes, it says uh, I cannot share screen. Mark, you have to stop sharing. Mark, please stop sharing. Yes, yes. Uh, is ah, my thank you. Thank you. Okay, yeah, thank you so much. You'll be starting. Very good. Uh, okay, everything's good. I see it. Okay. Uh, yeah, so uh, uh, thanks to uh, David, Annie, and the program committee for giving me an opportunity to present. Uh, this is a work that I did a number of years back. Uh, with uh, David Place State at uh, University of North Carolina and, and, and uh, former students in North Carolina and Buffalo. Uh, and uh, so let me just start with some, just, uh, just a brief remark on the origin of the idea. I, I think maybe some of you may be wondering what on earth subset logic programming. And, and so I, I'll just say a little bit about how, how it all came about. Uh, I think we are quite familiar with equational logic and uh, confluent rewriting. Uh, given a, a set of uh, equational rules like this, uh, defining functions, uh, if the rewrite rules are, are confluent, then uh, every expression has a well-defined normal form assuming this termination, right? So we are familiar with uh, equational logic and, and such confluent rewrite systems. And this is, in a way, you could say a foundation for functional programming. You know, uh, my former colleague, David Plaisted, you know, wrote a number of papers in, in the mid to late 80s on uh, non-determinism through non-confluent rewriting. And in the origin of subset logic is, is trying to give a, a, a declarative counterpart for non-confluent rewriting. That is, uh, the, the reduction of expression could give rise to many normal forms. And so all of them are collected together and, and they form the set that the expression represents. This is the, the core idea. I, I will just show a series of this very simple examples. So uh, suppose you're defining f of x, y as containing x and f of x, y as containing y, just a pair of rules. Then uh, you know the meaning of f of say a, b, b, c is just taking the union of the things that come out of each root. And so it is a, b, c. Okay, so you rewrite f of a, b, b, c in one way with one rule and another way the other rule and take the union. The smallest set or in logic programming terms, the closed world completion, these are the analogous terms. Or the, the, the containments need not be, can be cyclic. f a contains the set a, it contains f of b and f of b contains the set b and contains f of a. In a, in a normal style of evaluation, you would say, this is a flat out infinite loop, but there's a well-defined smallest set, which is A, B. So you can see right here that, oh, I see. So you have to determine, the detect cycles. Well, you know, uh, many years back, well, uh, the XSV system, which David developed at Stony Brook with his colleagues, I think the, the use of uh, memo tables, extension tables in logic programming, you know, was, was demonstrated very, very nicely in that system and very efficiently also. The other key idea is set patterns and, and how they finesse iteration over sets. Here we think of sets as finite sets because that's what we have in, in, in a logic programming language, right? The terms are finite. So here's a set pattern matching. So one constructor is x backslash s, which is uh, element and remainder. So if you match it with the set one, two, three, x is one and the set s is two, three, 
x is 2, s is 1, 3, and so x is 3, and s is 1, 2. Okay, so you can use that in writing a definition like this for say set intersection. Intersect of a pattern where you have an x from the first set and that same x from the second set. So if x belongs to the first set and x belongs to the second set, it belongs to the, to the intersection. So here, you know, we have exactly the kind of nested loops that you want. The, the first pattern runs through the first set and for each choice of x, it runs through the second set looking for a match. And if so, it is in the answer. If not, it isn't. And the set collection says, I want the set of all these things. And you can write more complex patterns. You want to join uh, two sets. Uh, you have a set of tuples P, X, Y, and a set of tuples Q, Y, Z, and you're joining on Y to get the answer. Okay, so set patterns are very useful for finessing iteration over sets. But there's another pattern which behaves more like a constructor because this uh, is the meaning of X slash forward slash is that if you match it one, two, X is one and S is two and S is also one, two. So this pattern is not so good for, it, for uh, use as a selector because you have additional matches. Okay. And, and it's also why we do not use the union, the union constructor, uh, uh, but rather we prefer the element remainder. But on the right-hand sides of rules, it is useful for adding an element to a set. So you can also write recursive rules. It's not that the rules are all non-recursive. So you can say that here's the power set of a set, the empty set, it's a set containing empty set for a non-empty set. Well, you find the power set of the tail and then you simply augment that answer with H, which includes everything from the power set of the tail and then adds on H. So you can write interesting recursive definitions. You can also cu couple the subset clauses with the relational clauses, the more traditional prolog-like clauses. So I have a database of edge relations and assuming those, uh, those edge relations form a cyclic graph. And you can, it doesn't matter that there's a cycle. You can see the reachable nodes from X contains X itself and everything you can get from, that you can reach from Y if there's an edge from X to Y. So if the graph is cyclic, you will get a cyclic call, but that's not a problem, a well-defined smaller set is there. You can also have set terms in, in relational rules like this. So say this is a permutation of a list of a set, an empty set is empty list, or a non-empty set it's a non-empty list if recursively you can get a list from the tail. And the iteration over, this, over the set is, is implicitly carried out through the set matching. And yeah, then you can collect minutes. all the one. Sorry? Two minutes. Two minutes. Two minutes? Okay, yeah. yeah. All right, that's good. So uh, yeah, the coupling of set, uh, subset clause and relation clauses, functions are in both the ground terms and, and relations, of course, do not. But we also have in logic programming that negation as failure is only sound with ground terms. It will give wrong answers with non-ground terms. So the groundness requirement is not unusual. You can have circular definitions with, mo with monotonicity also. And, and so uh, here, you can have functions that are composed with subset monotonic. And there's a well-defined least fixed point which uh, can be got. And the, the memo tables are monotonic memo tables where the answers progressively get iterated. We carried out this extension from subset clauses to partial order clauses. And this is useful for uh, problems of, uh, of monotonic aggregation in databases. Sorry, I don't have time to go into it. There are concise definitions. So you can have a greatest fixed point iteration or a least fixed point iteration, depending upon the type of the clauses. So um, just concluding remarks. So in, you know, what we've seen, subset clauses, set constructors, and finite sets, you know, provide a declarative rule-based approach to programming with sets. The subset clauses, I feel, interface smoothly with relational clauses. We had a language implemented called SURE. Uh, as I mentioned, the functions are invoked with ground terms and predicates with non-ground terms. Circularity of definitions is not a problem, but you have to have these monotonic memo tables. Uh, our papers also went into element at a time computation and how to not form sets and check for duplicates and things like that. Um, but I don't have time to go into it. You know, I have references and I've included a couple of papers 
uh, uh, in the notes if, if you're interested. Yeah, please look at that. Yeah, okay. thank you very much. I appreciate uh, Thank you. It was such a very interesting. Okay, so we will go to the next talk. Please keep your questions for the, the, the break the panel discussion.